Graham Lake from Tubby Tarot. Welcome back to my channel. As you can see, I have my altar placed in front of me. Um, in fact, I'm actually sitting behind my altar. And today's video is all about things on my altar that just make sense. Now, I follow a Hindu lifestyle, so I pray to uh, Lord Shiva. I also have a little Ganesha statue here, or um, some people would say it's an idol, it's not really, it's a deity, a little, um, little uh, uh, Ganesha. Now, obviously, when you're setting up an um, a altar, you're going to need some form of deity representation. I have my large Shiva, which I'm sure you guys have seen in other videos. He takes center stage, um, central place on my altar. Okay, remember that with Shiva, you don't need to have a massive altar cloth and roses and flowers and, and uh, banners and that sort of thing. Shiva is a very plain God. As long as you come to him every, um, every day uh, and just thank him for, being, for allowing you into his presence and just be grateful, there he is, he's fine. You can, you can do just a picture of him is fine, he doesn't mind. So I have my large Shiva. The other God I pray to before praying to Shiva is... Ganesha. There's my little Ganesha. As you all know, I'm sure I love a lot of Ganeshas, but this one is just special to me because he's brightly colored um, and he's, he's just, I'm just very attracted to him as an altar Ganesha. So I put him there. The other thing that I have, as you can see on my, on my, uh, my altar is my candles. Now I have one on each side of Shiva and then I also have, um, I have one in the front, which I'll talk about just now. But these, because I pray at night only, I don't do early morning prayers, I do just before I get into bed. So I'll have a shower, I'll come and do my prayers and I get into bed. Um, I like to have a candle on either side so that when the lights are out, um, it does tend to light up Shiva nicely so I can see him. And he, there's a lovely dis, like, sort of play on shadow and light. Um, so the, the, at night this altar really looks incredibly beautiful with, with the candle out, the soft candle light. Um, so the candles are really there to give light and also as a representation of fire, the element of fire, okay? Um, so those are my candles. I then have a, a thing called Shiva Lingam, okay? That is this thing here. It's a little, I'll pick it up and show you. It's, it's also known as a Lingam, but this in particular is a Shiva Lingam, which has got the three Shiva straps. This would be a representation of Shiva, um, of the Lord Shiva. Now, a, a couple of months ago, I had my bathroom redone and I had to move out of my house and I still was doing prayers, but I couldn't take this huge, big, beautiful Shiva um, deity representation with me. So I took the Shiva Lingam with me, okay? And the Shiva Lingam is what I would pray to in, if I can't have my actual deity there. All right, so that's a Shiva Lingam. Um, if you are, it's, it's a very interesting little thing. If you are interested, please go and look it up. Um, it's, it's quite fascinating, the story behind that. Anyway, I have my little Shiva Lingam there. The other thing I have on my, um, on my altar, of course, is incense. Um, I actually keep, gosh, I don't know what, oh, here's my box of incense. I keep a box of incense actually on my altar. I hide it kind of underneath there, okay? I keep it here. So every night, I would like a slight a stick of incense, pop it in my incense holder, and it is representing the air element, okay, the element of air. Also, just brings you into that headspace of prayer. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely smell throughout the, the top of my house. It's just really, it's a really nice um, thing to have on your altar, okay. I bought a big pot. See, I don't know if you can see, it's got a little face on it. It's quite cute. I bought the pot because I don't like the little um, incense holders because they get ash everywhere. So I put a little bit of soil in this pot. Um, it is quite big, and then when the ash drops, are you watching, and you go, boop, and it drops into the, into the pot, not all over my altar, okay? You can get comb incense, but I find that I've, I used to use only comb incense, but I've switched over to the, the actual upper body sticks, because for me, it just, it burns longer, um, and also I've got so many different, the, the different smells that you can get, the different um, uh, aromas that you get. So you must try and have some form of, um, of incense on your altar, which I have, kind of makes sense to me. The next thing I have on my altar, uh, which you don't have to have, is this little black, I keep, sorry, I keep burning my hair. I'm gonna blow the candles out because um, I keep burning my, my, the hair on my arms. Okay, you notice I didn't actually blow them out? I'll do a video on that at some stage. 
So I've got this little black pot. And this little pot is my rubbish pot. So I, when I light a match and the match is done, I just pop it into this pot so I don't have to keep looking around for a bin or whatever. And of course, when the pot gets full, I just take it, throw it away, I throw it, I empty it, and it sits on my altar right there, kind of out the way. You don't have to have one of those if you don't want, but it kind of makes sense to me that there's this pot. Boom, there it is. The other thing that I have on my altar that just really makes sense to me is this little Bhagavad Gita. Okay, this is kind of like the holy book, in, um, Hindu holy book, uh, Asian Indian holy book. Um, it's just really cool. Um, I have shown you this before. And it's a really nice size. And I just keep that on my altar. I don't read it every night. But every now and again, when I'm feeling like, I'm feeling, I need a little bit of inspiration. Just as part of my prayer, I will just pick it up and I'll read one or two of the little sayings and of the little stanzas, I think you would call them. Okay, great book. Get one, read it. The other thing I have, obviously, um, that makes sense on an, on an altar. Any altar, doesn't have to be a Hindu altar. Any altar would be a bell. Okay, the bell I use to start my prayer. So before I even start praying, I would light my candles, light my incense, and then I would sit down, cross-legged on the floor on my prayer mat, and I would ring the bell to signal that I am here. Okay, I have entered into this space, this sacred space. I would then also, once my prayer is finished, I would then also ring the bell to say, right, I'm leaving now. Um, I'm, I'm going to exit my sacred space. You can do this with any, any religion, any, any, um, any altar. It just creates, for me, it creates a sacred space. Okay. Also, can, kind of gets rid of any stale energy in the, in the area at that moment. All right. So, everybody says to me, okay, Matt, like, now you've got a couple of things on the altar that don't, we don't know what they are. So, let's have a look at these hands. Okay. Now, the hands... Can you see they're so cute? Look there, so cute. They're a little incense holder, a cone incense holder. But I don't use it for that anymore. I pop a little candle in, a little tea light candle, and then I do what is called an arti. Okay, it's where you you would move this, you put the hands together, light the candle, and then move it in a clockwise direction three times, and then an up and down direction three times. It's just a an added, an added form of prayer that you do to to praise your your god or goddess okay so i have that kind of makes sense you do get other things you get like something like this which you would put your incense there okay can you see and then you would do your rt like that boom 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 i however have this and i use this as a candle snuffer so i would just boom, boom, put my candle out Put my candle out and of course i would also go boom put my candle out this is not a candle snuffer you can get them from um i don't know where you'd get them in america or england but in south africa if you're watching you can get these at like osmonds um you can get an actual candle snuffer from mr price they are very affordable and they're one of the best things you could do especially if you have an altar situation where you need to extinguish candles um please understand never ever blow a candle out. It's very, very bad karma. It's not the done thing. You would either extinguish it with, like I did, with a little spittle on your, on your fingers, and you can go tweak, tweak, and make that out. It won't burn you, I promise you. Or you can use your candle snuffer. But please, disrespectful to your deity, disrespectful to anybody who is into prayer, into setting up an altar, don't ever blow your altar candles out. Very disrespectful for the, to the energies and to the gods. Okay. So there's another thing that just makes sense to me because I can't constantly tweak out cans. I'm also a little bit afraid of black fire. Um, Jack, do you want to come and sit here with Danny? Come, you can come sit here. Sorry, Jack Russell, because I'm sitting on the floor. He's not used to me sitting on the floor. Come, you can sit here. Okay, so the other thing that I've got on my, on my altar, which tends to kind of make sense to me, is this little box, which I'm sure a couple of you have seen my altar tour, my, my room tour. You've seen this little box. It's very cute. It's got like little metal thing that little metal engraving thing this little okay it's very good it's very old box and inside this box i keep my lighter okay my little big lighter um that is to light my candles and then i keep a little box and i don't have any with me i keep a little box of matches okay 
I just keep that little box of matches in there because with matches, I light the match here and then I light my RT um, candle. I never light this candle here with a lighter. You don't have to do that. It works for me. I feel it's slightly more um, appropriate to light the RT candle with from the from the flame there. You don't have to do that. Um, again, you don't have to have this, but it makes sense because I've got all my stuff together. Now, I'm leaving something for last because I'm going to explain it to you, but the other thing that kind of makes sense to me that I have on the, on the altar, and you can do this, please people don't think that this is disrespectful, I have a, a box of, my, my box of tarot cards. This is the, the Rider Waite Smith deck that I aged. I don't know if you remember, I did a whole video on aging this deck. And I do leave it here because sometimes I don't want to read the Bhagavad Gita. I want to do a three card spread for myself. Just basic. Guys, you don't have to spend an hour at your altar. At most, at most, if I do um, my prayers, my reading, if I read out of the Bhagavad Gita, if I do the Gayatri Mantra, um, which I'll do a video about as well, 10 minutes tops. Sometimes not even 10 minutes, okay? Um, but I tend to use, I don't use everything at the same time. However, every single time I do finish a prayer, whether it's a three minute prayer or a 10 minute prayer, I put a dot of this, I'm going to show you. Um, this is prayer ash. Now, I keep this little bottle, it totally makes sense to me to keep it on my altar. When I'm finished my prayers, I take a little of my finger and I put a dot on my forehead. That is to signal complete ending of the, the prayer, okay? It is a third eye um, symbol um, that symbolizes the fact that you are now, having been in the presence of your God, it is now you are a more seeing, thoughtful, and radiant person. Does that make sense to you? That makes sense to me. Okay, so that basically is my altar. Um, I do, however, want to just mention something. A lot of people think that this ash is human ash. It is not. I actually joke with Justin all the time and say, right, do you want some of my human, I'm putting human ashes. You know, there's a, there's a sect, um, a Shiva sect, in fact, in India. They call themselves the Agori, and they are people who worship, worship Shiva, and they, they tend to live in the graveyard. But that's a, a story for a whole, that's a whole story for another day. This is lime ash, okay? They burn the lime. Um, it's not human ash, it's not, it's not the scatterings of, of Africa and her people. It is, <laughs> it is simply lion ash that you use. And that is, that's all the things that just make absolute sense to me that are on my, on my altar. I use all of it, perhaps not all of it at the same time, but I, I use everything. I use my cards, my, my ash all the time. I have my deities, I've got my snuffer, I've got my book, I've got my bell, I've um, got my incense, I've got my candles. Um, it all just makes sense to me. What does your altar look like? I wish you guys could take a picture and, and send it to, and, and put it down there, but you can't. So let me know, write me a little paragraph to try and get my mind around seeing what is on your altar if you have one. You know who I am, I'm Matt from Tabby Terror, and I will see you on the flip side.